Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to our podcast and video interview se series. Today, I am honored to have Jenny Maroney out of Den Denver, Colorado. She has been doing portrait photography for over close to 15 years now. Some amazing tips and tricks we are going to learn from her today. Um, from her, the, the mistakes, the things that she's stumbled on, the things that she's done that have worked. We're really going to dig into it so you guys can walk away with some really tactical things. I really like focusing each one of these sessions on not just staying high level because I, I love to talk about that stuff. But it's important that we get into tactical things and activities you can Im start implementing in your business right away. So without further ado, Jenny, welcome. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks, Nate. Thanks for having me. I'm honored to be here. Awesome. Well, some of the tricks we're going we're gonna to talk about today... So uh, we've, got, we've got this great marketing tactic I've seen done in a couple places where you start really leaning on this asset you have, which is being an expert photographer. And a lot of your clients don't know they have nice cameras, even if it's just an iPhone. They've got nice cameras, nice DSLRs, and they don't know how to use them. It sounds so counterintuitive, but we're going to learn today about how you can use creating your own teaching lessons, own courses for your clients that's actually going to bring you more business. We'll talk about that. We're going to talk about um, how Jenny made the leap to in-person sales. We talk about this concept a lot on the show, but I think it's really important. I like digging into that emotional milestone where we finally get the confidence to do in-person sales and overcome that fear. And then talking about fear, I think that bleeds right into pricing. Jenny is a passionate uh, teacher also about how you can adjust your pricing and structure your pricing, understand your business better. So again, so that you have the confidence to charge what you are worth. All right, let's jump in. So t tell me, let's go all the way back to just becoming a photographer. What what drew you to that? Why do you want to do this yourself as a business? Great question. <laughs> so uh, so my mom was a hobby hobbyist photographer for um, my whole childhood, and we always had cameras growing up to play with. And uh, we grew up in Vermont on 70 acres, so we were always photographing you know random tree forts that we had built or whatnot. And uh, I just loved it. And so I uh, I went to photography school. I'm, <laughs> I know I'm that rare breed, but uh, I went to Hallmark Institute of Photography and graduated in 99. I know I'm dating myself and uh, and I, I was lucky enough to have the support of my family and friends I nice. mean I'm shocked looking back I, I feel like someone would have been like are you serious but um, you know it's been the it's been the most amazing journey really it has um, I, I got out of photography school and started a little you know company in my hometown did of you, did you know you wanted to do portraits right away uh, so I was trained with portraiture and commercial work, and um, I knew I did not want to do weddings. And uh, the first thing I started doing was weddings because because the money's there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I set up shop in my little town um, in Vermont, and uh, quickly realized I didn't really want to be there at all anymore. <laughs> so um, I, I spent uh, I think about two years there before moving up and down the East Coast and working with other amazing photographers. Uh, and, and learning, learning from them, learning from their mistakes, learning how to run a studio, um, and it, it was a really amazing opportunity. Um, moved back to Vermont for a little while, and then moved my business to Colorado almost eight years ago. So okay. I've been in business for over fifteen, just in various locations across the U.S. Good for you, moving, moving cities, moving, leaving your market base is, is another unique challenge for sure. It is, it is. It's a scary, it's a scary thing, but I think it really makes us stronger as people and as photographers because if you have to leave behind the few, you know, the few clients you may have at that time and and start fresh. It's it's really a great challenge to, to, to like come out the other side of that. And like yeah, absolutely, it works absolutely. Same. Yeah, that's good for yeah. you. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so I think let's start in a, in the chronological order. I think a good place to start would be where I started. At, do, I had been doing photography myself, mostly just after having my kids. So I've been, I wasn't doing it professionally for very long before starting Sticky Albums, uh, but I was trying to do online sales. And in the midst of building my own confidence to have that in-person sales session, tell me how you built your own confidence in the, in the journey of making that transition. Yeah, that's a great question. It's scary. It's really scary because the last thing you want someone to do is sit down with you and be like, oh, I don't love your photos. And that's every photographer's fear of in-person sales. 
But you know, if you if you go above and beyond and you create a one of a kind experience for these for these clients, in addition to the beautiful portraiture that you're providing them, and and you just take it one step further and invite them into your studio, or if you don't have a studio yet, maybe you go to their home and you show up with a bottle of wine and some homemade cookies, or just something to show that you care. It really makes a difference. So um, so yeah, I was doing online sales for years, uh, not seeing much from it. I was getting really really discouraged. You know, I, I would charge the session fee, I would show up, I would do my best, I would get to know the families, I would goof around with the kids. I felt like I got these beautiful portraits and I'd put them online and I'd say, you've got a month to look at them. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was a good idea. Um, so, so I'd give them 30 days to make their decision. And we all know that after you see your photos for the first time, you know, you get less and less excited of, about anything and, and it becomes overwhelming and it becomes a task you have to take care of. And Someone, I'll do that tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Exactly. Tomorrow. Exactly. I'll do it once I put the kids to bed and, and whatnot. But I actually had a client once say to me that it's just too much work, Jenny. It's just too much work. And it, it really, I'm so thankful that that client was honest with me because I realized that the one thing I don't want to do is leave my clients with homework is exactly what I was doing. I was yeah. leaving them with a lot of homework where they had to decide how many, you know, eight by tens they need for grandma and grandpa for Christmas. And they had to decide what's going to look best above their mantle. They have no idea. And I actually once walked into a client's home and saw an eight by 10 hanging above a standard size sofa and I almost died. I was like, that looks horrible. Don't do that. How many people have you told was, that was mine? Oh no. <laughs> so I was so embarrassed, but it really made me realize that it was my fault. I had done my clients a big disservice. And so, um, I think it might've been Sarah Petty years and years ago in one of her, you know, podcasts or, or teaching lessons yep. had said, I dare you all just to try one in-person sales session. And if it's horrible and you don't make any more money than you normally would, then go back to online sales, but just try one. Yeah. And, and I was fortunate enough at the time to have a studio and I don't know why I didn't think of this before, but I said, you know what? Forget it. I'm just going to try it. I'm going to have them in. I offered snacks. I had a nice candle burning. It was in my old studio. It was a cramped little space. They bought, I think, three or four times what I would have ever sold online, and they just kept complimenting me. I did the slideshow set to music. They were crying. I had tissues the whole nine, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's it? It's that easy? And that right there built my confidence because, I mean, just the first time, and again, to whomever's listening, if you haven't tried an in-person sales session, I dare you to try just one. <laughs> just do it once. Do it at a coffee shop. Do just it try a, it. Do it in the client's home. Mm -hmm. Just have that in-person experience. I think, I felt... There was a part of me that just knew I was not only was I doing them a disservice, that I was robbing myself of why I was doing photography anyway. Absolutely. Which is seeing like being able to see your clients react, anybody, seeing any human being react to your art. Mm -hmm. That's that's part of why we're all so bad at business. It's because I, that's that'll that'll fuel us for months, right? It's just amazing. Seeing, it's amazing, and that's you know I'm. Also a pretty big nerd. Uh, I love the business side of the business. Yeah. So um, I can't believe I hadn't done this sooner. And then actually I was also introduced to ProSelect right around the same time. Mm -hmm. And once I started using that, I mean, that changed everything. So um, for those of you that are unfamiliar with ProSelect, it's a software that you can use. And I actually have our, we actually have our clients email us photos of any rooms in their home that they would consider hanging their portraits in before their session. So I can style their newborn session or their children's session um, with the wraps that I use or the colors that I use for the area of their home that they're going to hang in. So for instance, if it's a baby girl and they're going to have um, the photos hanging above the crib in the nursery, um, you know, I ask them what their favorite colors are, but I've now seen a photo of exactly what their nursery looks like. So I can go into my se my session shooting with intent. Yeah. It needs to be a horizontal for above the crib or it needs to be a trio collage or whatnot. And then during their viewing session, they've forgotten that they even emailed us those photos. We import them into ProSelect. We show them on the large screen in the lounge their photos, and then the last couple photos that we show them are collages that could be on their walls, scaled to size, and that's always where they lose it. And just seeing that emotional connection of the artwork that I've provided them and helped create with them for their family, that's something that's going to last a lifetime. That's something that they're truly going to enjoy every single time they walk past it. Exactly. Oh, well said. I love it. That's so, so cool. Um... I think all of those, you did a good job of dropping in some good tips. So even if you are doing in-person sales, those are some good ways to take it to the next level. You're just really owning the fact that this is this is how you build your confidence to charge what you're worth is by delivering on the full experience and the full service. There's so much, even if you're just getting started, there's so much we take for granted about the things you know, about what looks good, what an 8x10 looks like on a wall. <laughs> We deal with these things every day. Our clients don't. No. And so it's it, it's not going to really, 
it's not going to cost you that much energy. That's why you're a professional, right? Exactly. And exactly. so it, it just baking that in is going to give you the confidence to charge what you're worth. Exactly. Okay. It's really helped our business, um, you know, go above and beyond with the one of a kind experience. And now our studio is much larger and, you know, we, we really have it custom to our brand. And when you walk in, you know, you've got the same scent every time with the, our favorite anthropology candle burning or whatnot. And you're always going to get a latte that I'm going to make for you. And I'm going to hopefully remember what type of milk you have. And we're going to have the cookies and whatnot. But when they sit down, it's about seeing their beautiful photos. And it's just taking it that one step, that one extra step, you know, and holding your client's hand. Because like you said, Nate, they, do, they don't deal with eight by tens or sizes every day or decorating their walls with portraiture. And that is what we do. And it comes easy to us. But we forget that they don't know those things. You know, how many times do you have a client call and say, I think I want a 10 by 16. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> Let, let's talk about that. But showing them what a 10 by 16 looks like opposed to, you know, the size that, you know, a 16 by 20 or whatever it is right, right, that right. they're actually looking for. So, yeah, yeah just holding your client's hands and, and being there to help them, not only with the portraiture, but follow it through with decorating their home. You know, that's what they're investing in, the experience. Yeah, I think that, over the years, I've seen different photographers struggle with, I think we were some of the first small businesses to come online. And so seeing different small businesses struggle with how do you be yourself? How do you demonstrate a, a clean professional brand online? Um, and But there's this like, some people I think get a little too uh, transparent. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> this example I'm thinking of is any small business owner, whether like I had just had a guy come and look at my, put a garage heater in my garage. And he starts breaking down all of the things he's got to do. And he was like, sorry, I'm talking out loud. I was like, no, no, it's fine. It's good practice to like say these things out loud. He's like, I got fittings and copper and 30 feet of copper and this and this and my time. And, it's about... and so he was just a, like, he wasn't even conscious of it. Um, but any small business has this issue of their, their customers not understanding Mm -hmm. the idiosyncrasies and the details that go into running that business. They just Absolutely. don't. Mm -hmm. Complaining about it is going to get you nowhere. It right. looks so tacky. Right. You go on your blog and you complain about, woe is me. This is what ha this is how much work goes into my business. Right. You need to just show it. Know, know that this is just a part of being a business. People aren't going to understand how complex it is. But when you deliver on an awesome experience, mm -hmm. That's 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 where you actually reap the benefits. Absolutely, so, that's when they talk. Yeah. So I love this uh, sentence on your website. This just popped out at me because we specialize in helping people make mobile apps, but I've been so passionate to, to, to make re really make it really clear that this is about helping you. Uh, like a sticky album is about helping you get more customers to come in the door that you can give a full service to, mm -hmm. not just an app. An app is purely icing on the cake. It's purely designed to make them go wow. Mm -hmm. It's designed to get over that that uh, that short term kind of days they have. Like I just need something. I just need digital. Yeah. Can I get the digitals? <laughs> Why do you want the digitals? Well, I want it on my phone. I want to share them on Facebook. <laughs> We've got something for you. Yeah. Custom app just for that. And we also work with our customers to create artwork for their whole home that'll last you for years. Mm -hmm. So you capture this with our goal is to help you leave something behind for your children and grandchildren to remember you by, not just an iPhone full of snapshots. Yes, and I heard that once before and I can't remember who I heard it from, but I think it's so important. It captures exactly how I feel. <laughs> yeah, I think it, it's really important as a business to tap into the problem we're solving. And if you think of your, if you answer that question with, oh, I just take pictures for people. Nope. Everybody takes pictures. Nope. Like, who cares? What's special about that? What's unique right. about what you do? Right. And uh, the the problem we're solving is is that stress to moms, to parents like us who are stressed. Like, I've got this, I've got this phone full of pictures, but nothing on the wall, nothing mm -hmm. to show for it. I, you lose a phone, you panic. Oh my God, where did all these pictures go? Yeah. Um, we're providing more than just a service of taking the pictures. Mm -hmm. It's about creating artwork, getting books printed, getting artwork made. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I think it's really important. And I always say to my clients, you know, I, I, I do sell digitals. I know not every photographer does, but I do. And they're in my higher end packages. Yep. But you need more than just digitals because in the years past when, when I was photographing weddings, 
for um, I photograph weddings for 12 years and I don't anymore. But um, when I was doing that, a lot of those clients are now my my mommy clients nice. because they've had kids since, which is great. But um, you know, I always ask, what'd you do with that wedding disc? And nine out of ten times, I say I hear that, oh, you know what? It's still collecting dust. Nothing. It just it makes me so sad because again, I, I dropped the ball. You know, there's. I drop the ball and providing something for them to walk past every day that puts a smile on their face, whether it be an album or a, a wall canvas or a wall portrait or whatnot. And I also left a lot of money on the table. I mean, totally. that could have been money made and, and an easy one at that. I mean, it's their wedding. They want a finished product. And not to say that we didn't do albums for most of our clients, but yep. you know, some of the clients that decided to add the disc on, they didn't really do anything with. So yeah. I, I agree with you 100%, getting I, them, on, getting them out there. A good, that's such a good like ownership of leaving money, like falling short and upfront. I just reminded, I don't shoot a lot anymore as I've, almost my time is busy running sticky albums. Um, but I, I, it's hard still to say no to family, mm -hmm. of course, and so I'll still do <laughs> sessions, but I did, so, so I've got two cousins. Once I did like four years ago and then one I just did this year and I went through just, I didn't even have like a good process to go through, but I knew I wanted to, d to deliver more than just digitals and say, Hey, I work with a ton of labs. Let's talk about the artwork we can create that you can have forever. Mm -hmm. I love this new album design company. I go through Rabuku, who does all the album design for me, prints these yeah. great books through H&H. &H. Super easy for me, but I know it's light years above what they would oh, get yeah. at like Shutterfly or something, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so I showed them this for the, the most recent senior, and they're like blown away. Like, oh, my gosh. And her mom's like, could you, could you do this for this? First, like the other cousin who's who you did pictures for four years ago, I was like, oh my god, yes, I'm so sorry. Like, absolutely, we can do that for you. And it's just a good awareness of how the op like the opportunities I was missing early on. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, exactly. And just to go back on the um, the in person sales sessions, it really all it only takes just asking questions and learning to be a good listener because people love to talk about themselves. People love to talk about their kids even more than that. Right. So if you can just get them talking about what their goals are and you know what they missed out or what they feel they missed out on as as a child or what they wish they had done or their parents had done as far as portraiture right. um, and and you know what size home they have are they the type of people that want to hang something on the wall or they would they rather do an album you know mm -hmm. do they plan to send holiday cards do the parents want to be on the holiday card just asking questions that are so easy to answer for parents but if you don't ask these questions then you're going into a session not knowing exactly what to sh what to shoot right, so right, if right. you know all these things ahead of time it makes the sales session zero pressure I mean they already know your pricing it shouldn't be sticker shock at that point they already know what they've what they're investing in totally. they already know what you have to offer because they've seen it either on your website or in your studio right, and right. then you just provide these beautiful portraits and say hey I can do the following things for you and remember you said you were interested in this this and this yeah. well here you go I've designed these things for you take a peek it's totally. just it's a it's a really easy sale to be honest with you yeah, well, I, I think I, always, I never missed the opportunity to also chime in. One of my favorite things to talk about on put, what do you put on your blog is when people complain that everybody just comes asking for digitals. Ask yourself, well, what do you have on your blog? Is it mm -hmm. just pictures? Is it just digitals? Right. Well, that's what people are coming for because that's what right. you show. But the best things you can show and showcase on your blog are pictures of your artwork in your clients' homes. Exactly, exactly. It's such a simple trick, but it helps exactly. you think about that's what you want to be selling that's what you have to be showing absolutely i think that's really important okay let's switch gears i could talk this is really good stuff i love <laughs> talking about marketing i want to make sure we cover some of the the marketing lessons you've learned in 15 years of running a business and you've transitioned to primarily shooting newborns uh so what what are some of the the lessons you've learned along the way um so as far as well, uh, for newborns, just a basic tip, um, which we all know, but uh, make sure that they're in within the first two weeks. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's really important. But, um, you know, again, I think it goes back to knowing what your client wants. Just yeah. being a good listener is the number one mistake that I used to make all the time because we all get busy. You know, life happens and we have our own kids and we have our own lives and whatnot. And it, you know, you kind of go in, you can go into autopilot a little bit and I can just pick up my camera and photograph a new. But if you don't know what your client wants, then you're, you're setting yourself up for a big disaster. Totally. Um, yeah. I, I, I've also learned that, um, you know, making sure that your client feels really, really comfortable uh, ahead of time. So yeah. selling yourself. Um, this is something I, I just took a, the Photographer Rising workshop with Heidi Hope. Um, it completed two weeks ago. And I can't say enough about that. Oh, my gosh, you guys, you should totally take that. It's amazing. Yeah. But um, she was really driving home the point that we have to sell ourselves, you know, like, 
if if you're just price shopping and you and I've made this mistake many times over, but if you just have your pricing on your website, then people are just price shopping and you don't have an opportunity, even if you have pages and pages and pages of text on your website telling how great you are and all that you offer and what you do above and beyond photography, like you said, like what is it that you can solve for a problem? And if it's just take pretty pictures, a lot of people can take pretty pictures. What is it that you do that's different? Yeah. And you can have that all over your website, but nowadays people are so busy, they don't have time to read. But if you can get them on the phone, it's amazing how you can immediately start a friendship or at least a relationship because you can start asking them questions. Yeah. They can start talking. You can start building that and then telling, okay, well, you've said that you want this, this, and this, and I can solve those problems by this, this, and this. Totally. And, and I think just building those relationships. And for me, it meant taking on less sessions per month to be able to do that because I don't have that much time and yeah. I do have a toddler at home <laughs> and, totally. um, and I want to spend time with him still. So I, I think that that was a big one for me, um, really, really building those relationships because that's how you build a loyal client, you know, yeah. the yeah. one that goes and tells their friends about you not because you know not not really for any other reason because you've made them feel special it's how you make them feel yeah i think i, I think i'm already going to know a lot of the answers to these questions and, and a lot of your marketing is about channeling is, is on the front end just delivering an awesome experience so that you drive word of mouth referrals mm -hmm. what are some other marketing tactics that have worked for you that might not work in the, any so much anymore but what are some that some marketing specific lessons you've learned. Sure. So, um, so one thing is we have been focusing for the last few years on SEO really heavily. Um, so we blog often, and when we blog, we try to make it very conversational because Google's so good at knowing that you're just sprinkling in keywords. But um, you know, blogging and more or less telling the story of how that session felt to us or the importance of hanging porches in the home or whatever we're blogging about, just really try to speak to our audience as, as if we're speaking to our favorite client that we have. Um, so that's been huge for us and it's really, really worked out. Um, it's paid off tenfold just in our time that we've invested um, because we are on, you know, first page Google search for this area for, for many of the keyword phrases so that we started. Let's, let's break that down for somebody that's new to SEO. So what that means is it's something, I think what's daunting is it's not something you can just click, it's not a switch. No, no, it's, no, no. It's like, it's like any of the, the marketing strategies or tactics that are really worth your time are the slow building um, incremental compound effect types of strategies where you are being strategic about the title of your posts mm -hmm. and you're writing with with good language about what you do and the types of clients and services that you want to deliver so when people search for those terms google finds you right that's the short Ex version exactly and another little tip is um for those of you that are using wordpress uh there's a plugin called yoast and it will actually grade your blog post and tell you how well you've done with a green light go yellow light yield <laughs> red light stop that's not any good awesome. so <laughs> um and, and uh, i think it's y-o-a-s-t awesome. um it's, it's a i'm pretty sure it was a free plugin on WordPress, but it's it helped us tremendously just because before it's a guessing game. You know, you, you write this blog post that you think is phenomenal. Well, Google might actually be demoting it because you used a word that's, you know, too yeah, often right. used or whatnot. But this program actually tells you, or this app tells you, uh, or excuse me, this plugin tells you that you've done well or you haven't and Perfect. what to change. That's it's smart. really helpful. So definitely try that. Yeah. I think that one of the things to avoid is if I, when I give recommendations on SEO, a lot of the early stuff a couple years back was all about how to game, mm. how to trick Google. None Google's of those smart. Things, none Don't of those try to trick are. Google. Yeah, Google's <laughs> too smart. They've got yeah. hundreds, thousands of like, yeah. PhDs. Like, you thousands of thousands. Even if you can tr trick Google for a week, it's going to change. So the good news is don't stress yourself out about what you should be saying. Just right. focus on, on talking about, like, mm -hmm. I think that's a really good mindset. Like, as if you're writing to your favorite client. Mm -hmm. That's a really good way to think about it. And then using tools like that, that will validate that uh, this is it's, it's good and you're gonna get ranked for what you wanna get ranked for. Exactly, and and then the people that land on your site, you're also pre-qualifying them because you know if you're charging, we're one of the higher end photographers in this area and, and you know it costs at least $1,000 to do a newborn session and up. So it's not just anyone that can afford that. So I want to pre-qualify my clients that land on my page because our pricing is not on there. So before I pick up the phone, I really want to make sure that they feel like what we have to offer is what they're looking for and that I can solve that for them, right. that I can provide that for them. So that's really important to us so that we blog in that way. We totally. write. One of the things I noticed on your site, I forgot to ask us in the pre-call, but I think you've got a email opt-in form. We do. So how long have you been doing that? And I love I could I could talk for a couple hours on email. So let's I'll try to be short. Um, 
when did you start doing it? And let's first tell me like the value you're, you're seeing from implementing an email marketing strategy. This is a great question. Okay, so this is on our major to-do list for 2015. It's something we were pouring a lot of energy into. So we're just getting started. But um, so far, what we have, um, for those of you that have visited our site, you'll see it's it's also just a plugin for WordPress. Um, it pops up after the viewer's been on our page for, I think, five or ten seconds. Okay. And it just says, um, be in the know and uh, you know be the first on the list to yeah. find out news and tips and whatnot. So it could be clients signing up for it. It could be other photographers signing up for it because we do teach a photography pricing course. So we have all sorts of different people landing on our site. But I want to make sure that we get them in into the database. So um, so they just enter their email address and there's a couple other questions in there as well. So do you have kids? Do you live in the area? That sort of thing. So that I can make sure that when I'm sending an email for 10 tips on how to better photograph your kids during Christmas, I want to make sure that that's going to the right audience and not to a bunch of photographers that want to know more about pricing. And maybe they have kids and maybe they'd benefit from it, but I want to make sure that that works. But yeah, um, yeah it's really easy to implement. If you use WordPress, just use one of those plugins. Um, it auto imports into, uh, I think it's MailChimp for us. So we don't ever know that people are signing up. I don't, I, mean, I could set up alerts, but I, I don't because it's happening daily. Yeah. Um, and we take all of that and then, and like I said, this is something we're working on, but uh, we want to do, um, and we have done a couple already, newsletter only offers. So be sure you're on the, new, and we'll, we'll tease it on Facebook and social media, but be sure you're on the newsletter this week. You're not going to want to miss this. And it might be a tip. It might be a clothing guide with the hottest new trends. It might be new ideas for wall portraits. Um, you know, it might be, a, uh, maybe we're going to run a raffle, cop, raff, excuse me, raffle copter uh, giveaway, a, a session fee or whatnot. But but we really encourage people to get over to our website and not just be marketing through Facebook because totally. the more audience, more, excuse me, the more traffic you get to your website, the higher Google will also rank you because you're having people visit it versus doing everything on Facebook. That's that's no good for your business. Yeah, right. Facebook used to be gold and now it's getting harder and harder to, to make Facebook worth your worth your efforts. Absolutely. Um, very cool. Congratulations on taking that first step. I think it's Thanks. very intimidating to start doing email marketing. It's like, what, what, what is it? Why should I do it? And I'll, I'll speak to that in a second, but it's how do I start capturing leads? What do I do with them once I've captured them? Right. All of these things can be too overwhelming, but what's great is all of the tools are getting easier to use mm -hmm. and, and cheaper. Most of it's free. And guess what? We have to pay now if you want to post to your Facebook wall right? to push send on an email through MailChimp is pretty much free. Especially for someone that's already opted in. They right. took the time to say, yes, I want to receive emails from you. So I, I used to feel really guilty because I'm such a people pleaser. I never wanted to clog anyone's inbox. But uh, one of my family members recently said that, you know, we were talking about this and they said, they're asking for you to send to them. They're asking for you to do that. Don't feel guilty about sending them something. Just make sure it's good content. Don't, totally. Yeah. Don't I think you're going to something really, really clear. I think that's a hesitation that I had also. It's like, I don't want to be a spammer. I don't want to bother people. Right. It's you're not like MailChimp will punish you if you are sending something to people that who haven't said, yes, I want right. to be on this list. Right. Exactly. So you, as long as you're making an honest, transparent offer that they care about, it's 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 one of people like forget about email. But I, I, I joke around like if you for those of you with day jobs, uh, I used to work in a corporate environment when email went down, people went home. Like email <laughs> is so vital to how we do business with our friends and family and with, with businesses big and small. Like email is the foundation. Yeah. Yes, there's all of these other social media platforms. What do you need to create one of those accounts? Right, An email right. address. And take so, advantage of that. I mean, yeah. if people want to hear from you, totally. be, in, be in contact. It's, 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 I, I go on and on. I think if you want to learn more about email, we've got a great interview on the blog i'll post it in this post i don't i thought it was on our most popular post section but i've moved it down um so there'll be a link where we talk about just the value of doing email uh joy verse is somebody you've learned from also she's got this great interview i do with her about when she goes to she's built this snowball now for years when she sends out an email with an offer she knows she's got a s staff an additional person in her studio Mm -hmm. So that okay. is the why, right? You're not going to get that overnight. No. But that's what you get to build into. Where you're, and of course, uh, you're not offering a discount every single time. It's not always about you. Every time you send out an email, right. 
It's this value, value, value. Here's some great tips for shooting with your iPhone. Here's some cool things that are happening in the area. Here's like styling tips for taking pictures of your baby, things like that, that your audience specifically cares about. And then once in a while you say, hey, we're doing a special. Thanks for being on our newsletter. And the phone rings. It's, inc yep. it's pretty incredible stuff. Absolutely. And Joy, first, for any of you that don't follow her, you definitely should. She's amazing. She's a numbers guru, and she's a super, super amazing person as well. So definitely follow her. Yeah, I, I <laughs> you have a lot to learn from her. I yeah. love Joy. She's the, yeah. she's, she's the, I'm not going to swear. I, I was going to say, she, no, I am going to swear. She's a shit. I love Joy. <laughs> I think cool. that um, you just touched on something too. So um, value added incentives. Um, I, I think, I mean, it goes without saying, just not thinking about yourself first as the photographer and thinking about what can my clients gain from me that doesn't cost me very much. So yeah. like you said, it might be tips, it might be you know suggestions, it might be style guides and whatnot. But there's one thing that we're also working on um, this year that we want to try harder at. And in the past, we've offered um, mom workshops. Yep. So, uh, you know. That's what I want to talk about next. Okay, great. <laughs> so a group of, you know, Five, five to seven moms and they come into the studio. It's usually on a Wednesday night from you know six to eight or seven to nine or whatnot. We have wine and snacks and um, we usually charge for this course and it's um, you know a couple hours of us going over just camera 101. They bring their DSLR that they just got for Christmas that they have no idea how to use and they're using it on auto mode and I'm going to teach them just the basics. Like it's very, very high level, like just the basics. And then I, I show a slideshow and I show like the different direction of light on how to get those photos. But mm -hmm. A lot of photographers in the past have said, and um, you know, aren't you scared that they're going to open up shop next door or steal your clients or become, you know, your competitor? And I'm not because I think that that's one thing that sets us apart. Is I'm teaching you that I'm the expert, and everybody owns a camera these days, like you said, whether it's a DSLR or an iPhone. But everyone owns a good camera. But that doesn't mean that everyone's a photographer. And I want to show them that difference. I want to show them all that goes into it, all the years of experience and training, and you know whatnot that has taken for me to get to this point, to be able to capture a gorgeous photo of your child being himself in this, in this lighting or this environment. Yep, yep. But it doesn't mean that I can't teach some basic tricks to do at home because I don't expect them to hire me every day of their lives. Totally. I want them to be able to photograph the daily and the, the, the little things that happen at home when my son does something. And I'm so thankful that I am a photographer, but I want to teach moms how to capture, and parents in general, how to capture those little moments on their own when they can't hire me. Yeah. You know, whether they hire me once or twice a year, but yeah. for the little I, daily stuff. It's reminded me when I first started, before I was uh, shooting pro, um, I, I was like, I've always been passionate about photography and I would just devour all the education, lighting, composition, all these things. And as I started taking pictures of my children, that was, I, I think we're all used to this now. I wasn't used to it then. But you get all of these questions and people are asking about the camera. It's such a safer thing to right. ask a question about. Right. Not how did you take that picture? How did you light it? What 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 about that picture? Why do I love it so much? Um, it's, oh, you have a nice camera. And I, I made the mistake of not understanding and not being conscious of how much effort I was putting in to, to the craft, right? And Absolutely. I felt so bad when I finally had this aha moment where... I had walked a close friend of ours, they had their kids and like, they really wanted to get a DSLR. It was a very big investment for their family because they don't shoot for professionally. It was just for pictures of their kids. I walked through all the lens choices and all this stuff. And I, I followed up a couple months later. I was like, hey, how's it going? And it was just, I'm so glad she was honest with me, but she's like, it's okay, but our pictures just don't look like yours, Nate. And I was like, I'm really sorry. Like I, that's a huge compliment. I'm flattered. <laughs> and I, I should have been more upfront with you about how much time I unconsciously have invested in, in photography and it's Absolutely. not just the camera. So, so what you're doing is you're going out to your current client base and target market in offering to teach some basics. So what right. happens once you've ta t taught some of the basics, what, where, where do you go from there? So um, our goal was to do a photography 101 and then more of like a boot camp sort of thing. So yeah. the um, get them out, you know, into a playground setting or something that's natural. And they we're not really sure how we would do this, but whether I bring my own son 
I don't know how that would work out. <laughs> or they bring their kids and I teach them how to photograph, you know, kids running around and that sort of thing. So that would be the next step. However, I think we've changed directions and I, I'm not sure that I want to charge for this anymore. I think I want to do it for my current clients only as an incentive. Anyone that books, you know, has already booked a session in 2014 or, is, you know, has booked one in 2015 um, can come to this ladies night out or, you know, whatnot. Such a and sweet incentive. What a great, what a great twist. I love it. Yeah, actually, um, I was just talking to Heidi Hope about this, um, and and I think it's it's a really great idea, and I think it's a great transition because um, a lot of moms were signing up and then saying, oh, my husband's not going to be home, but you know, can you refund me my two hundred dollars, whatever? And it's just, I would rather it be much more um, informal and just casual. Bring your camera, we're going to drink some wine, we'll chat. I'm just going to show you the basics. You know, you ask me questions, and I'll answer to the best of my knowledge. Right, I'm not. Right. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'll do the best I can, but by, by all means. But um, and then, then the next step would be if if they do want to do something like you know a boot camp or get out in the field, maybe we offer that in the summertime. But I, I think that that makes more sense than trying to get new clients or you know I, I don't think it's a good marketing tool to try to get new people into the studio to try to teach them how to use their camera. But instead, reward the people that are already working with us and that are loyal to us, and right. it's just another out value added incentive. Yeah, I want to pause here for a second. On why? I think a lot of the tactics we're talking about are effective and it's something in marketing that we don't really think about is that there's two types of marketing or two reasons I think is all about obviously getting your clients to come in and hire you for the service you provide. Mm -hmm. The reality is they are not looking for a photographer the majority of the year. They do not need their picture taken right. every week, every month. And so they're not shopping. For a photographer very often right. when they come across you your newsletter your website a friend of theirs gets their picture taken and they're like oh my gosh those are beautiful when i they'll even think to themselves when i am in the market to hire a photographer i want to go back to them but then they forget about it right because it's just right. just they're bombarded with a thousand things every every month so what this does is every time you're touching that that potential client mm -hmm. it's establishing your brand right as Absolutely. the expert and that's so when they finally do think oh I, I am in the market or my girlfriend or somebody's looking for a photographer they you think become the first person they think about absolutely and this and is just little, one more way to be be the expert right where they're like yeah. oh, i know who takes great pictures because she taught me how to take great pictures right right and also another way i mean just little things but i know a lot of photographers don't do this but um staying in the forefront of your of your clients minds mm -hmm. um throughout the year if you know send a little handwritten card like you know how, how's your summer break going right. hope to see you again this fall like you know name the children by name and just yes. I mean, nobody writes handwritten notes anymore, and I think that goes a long way. Our clients are always saying, you always take the time, and you always remember birthdays. We send birthday cards to all of our um, children's clients, and then, you know, holiday cards. And, and I always, I include a photo of my family on the holiday card, because I, I want them to know me, you know, in a way that they trust me, not yeah. just as their photographer, but as someone as part of their life, so that when they have a friend that's pregnant, or they're in, in you know, in need of a photographer, there's no other photographer they think of, they think of me. Yeah. That's so my then goal. You, you touched on the second part of what where marketing works. First is when they think they need this thing solved, they think of you. That's the first one. That's the first win. Once you've got clients, that's where being top of mind, mm -hmm. that's when you start to invent other reasons for them to get photographed throughout the year that they won't think about themselves. Exactly. But then we're like, oh my gosh, yes. Holiday, like, let's do a holiday session. Let's do a fall session. Let's do... Right. Like if they've just done newborn, like, oh, yes, let's go the whole family this time. My family's right. going to be in town. They're going to they start thinking or with prompt from you of other opportunities to to to, uh, to hire you. Exactly. Especially our newborn clients, because I don't know about for you, but that first year flew by for us. I didn't I mean, I swear we brought him home from the hospital yesterday. And he's about to turn three now. So it's it's crazy how quickly time flies. And I know it's so cliche, but we um, after a client comes in, we we handwrite a note and um, or, or we we use a shoot cue. So we have a calendar of everyone's birthdays and it sends us a little reminder. Nice. And then we write them a little note and we send it in the mail. And, you know, maybe we send it a couple months before their first birthday or, you know, we were doing it by email. But now I think it makes more sense to do it by mail because people skim over emails and if you actually get a handwritten card in the mail you'll open it and you're gonna take the time to read it and whether you hire us or not for your child's first birthday you know at least you know that we're thinking of you and hopefully in turn you'll think of us next time you're in need yeah perfect awesome stuff so now I want to wrap up with some awesome tips on pricing and on our pre-call you mentioned when you started to make the transition again into really looking closer at your own pricing and what was that aha for you 
So after having my son Miles um, almost three years ago, I, I was just wrapping up weddings. I knew that I wanted to get out of that and I was the crazy photographer that always put my family on hold and I put everybody else's first. I'm a huge people pleaser still to a fault and, uh, and I flew my whole family and my newborn five weeks old to the East Coast from Colorado to photograph a wedding that I had committed to and my husband... <laughs> bless him, uh, was such a good sport about it. But uh, yeah, that was the moment where I said, I can't do this anymore. I can't. If I'm going to be leaving my family on the weekends or making them come along even worse, <laughs> yeah. um, it better be worth all of our, our all of our while. And that's when I really started digging deep, you know, trying to figure out, are my numbers where they need to be? Yeah. Um, am I... Am I shooting, am I working harder than I need to be? I really would rather work smarter than harder. And I want to make sure that every, I know exactly where every penny's going to within my business and also where every penny's coming from and where I need to put more energy. So right. that was the aha moment for me after having my son when I realized I, I can't keep, I can't keep up with this. Um, if I'm going to leave my family on the weekends, I want to make sure I'm getting paid Absolutely. well for it. I think we could, again, we could do hours on pricing and you've got some good resources yourself. If there's, this is a good time of year to be reflecting on it. It's a little bit slower taxes are due what where would you recommend somebody who isn't confident about looking at their numbers doesn't like the business side doesn't want to spend a lot of time doing it like what what's the little piece they should start with at this time of year great question so that was also another aha moment for me um when i would talk to my accountant at the end of the year and i'd be so sad i'd say that's all i took in i but i worked my tail off i thought i made more than that and yeah. You know, and you just, you get wrapped up. You get so wrapped up in the daily life and just go, 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 go. And just the harder I work, the harder, the more money I'll make. But I don't think that's always the case because I wasn't working very smart. So um, I sat down and just, I'm a super nerd. So I made myself a little Excel spreadsheet. And um, at the time I was actually taking Joy versus pricing class, which is also amazing. And, um, and I, I was, you know, putting everything that she was teaching into, you know, into this spreadsheet. And I was, I was learning exactly what my overhead was. And I was shocked to realize that, you know, by PPA standards, it's what, is it 35% it should be your overhead um, for expenses and whatnot. And I was really, I realized I was way out of the park on that one. I was spending so much money in places that definitely didn't need to be spent. So I started tracking that more closely and realizing let's try, you know, this month without this service and see if we can get by without it. And I realized half the things I was paying for and buying into, I didn't need. They weren't doing me any good. So I started cutting back on all those things and really keeping track of where every single penny was coming from and going to. And um, I also realized that I wanted to work a little less and spend more time with my son. So um, I started putting that into the spreadsheet. So all in all, I ended up um, making this workbook that's actually available on our website for any photographers out there that don't like numbers or don't want to do this themselves. But I've made this spreadsheet that all you do is you put in um, your desired yearly salary before taxes. You put in the amount of hours you want to work per month. And these are all, you know, you can play with these numbers to see how it adjusts your, your figures. But yep. um, And then you put in, uh, most importantly, you put in the time it takes you to not only create a product, but book a session, you know, do an entire session. Right. That, was, that was a big thing for me uh, back in the day. I was, I was, I mean, being a people pleaser, I was doing everything I possibly could for these clients and I wasn't tracking my time. Yeah. I wasn't charging for my time. I wasn't paying myself for my time. And it was a huge disservice to, to myself. Yeah. Um, I, 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 yeah, as soon it's as just I, not sustainable. It's not, it's yeah. not. And, and that was pretty much my breaking point. I had a little guy at home and I, I just, this was only a couple years ago. And I said, is if, if I can't make some major changes, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is good places to start is I know it's so hard. I've been there too. It's especially when you have a hunch, like we all intuitively know that our hourly rate isn't what it could be. Right. And it's, it's hard to look at, but as Seth Godin likes to talk about, like the Love places them. we're resisting sometimes, that's usually right where you got to go. Absolutely. And, and Absolutely. Just, and, and, and sit with the fear, with the uncomfortableness. Cause on the other side of that is it's the right, awesomeness. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, and so, just taking stock to the to the level of detail, you can always get better. And once it's it's kind of addicting. It's fun talking to people about this, where it's so scary at first. Just do a basic pass where you get how much did I make, how much time. Start even just ballpark estimating how much time you're putting into it and how much have I spent. Absolutely, those three numbers are going to open your eyes, and then you're Absolutely. going to want to dig deeper into the details as you go. 
Totally. Yeah. I mean, figuring out how much you spend per month on utilities doesn't sound very fun. But if you start tracking, you know, okay, so I got an inquiry yesterday. I replied by email. I spoke by phone for 20 minutes. Then I booked them. It took me 10 more minutes to collect payment. If you start actually tracking every single minute that you put into a session, and, and you can you could guesstimate it first, right. um, and then all the way through to delivery, whether that means you bring it to the post office, you package it, you ship it, or do you deliver it by hand to your clients' homes like we do often and hang the canvas for them. If you're doing all that, you really need to be charging for all of that. Yeah. So just keeping track, that would be my first step, I guess. My yeah. suggestion would be to track your minutes, track yeah. your hours, yeah. know exactly how much you're spending. just be honest with yourself about it. Even if it's rough estimates, that's still better than, than, than forgetting yeah. about it and yeah. just ignoring the, the blaring issue. Yeah. Um, and then finally, of course, it's about raising prices. And I wanted you to show some examples of your branding and packaging. Oh, yeah. I think that um, a lot of times raising prices mm. is about confidence. Where it's like, oh my gosh, uh, am I going to lose all my referral business because I used to only charge this much, but now I'm going to charge this? If that's scary. Yes, that's a hurdle, but it's something that if you if you want to run a healthy business, the cost of doing business is always going up, and if you want to have a life, it's, it's just something you need to do. So taking, okay. c committing to creating a, a better experience is reason to raise your prices. And then demonstrating this in your brand, taking the time in the off season to to make sure there's a consistency and that you are communicating in a, a luxury brand, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So and show I me think, some examples on how you've come across and iterated on your own brand. Yeah, totally. So, um, so just to show you a little thing. So um, a few years ago, we did a full rebrand, and we. Um, so if any of you guys are going to any of the photography conferences, imaging or WPPI, um, you'll see these people in person, but otherwise you could look them up online. But um, we use Rice Studios for our packaging and they are amazing. They were so helpful throughout the whole process, making sure that everything was spot on before we hit go. Cool. So um, we have, you know, our little, you know, our USB boxes. They're just little three by three boxes with our watermark on it. Um, we've got same boxes for five by sevens and eight by tens. Um, we do our wooden discs. These are the new whitewashed ones. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it has our oh, watermark nice. on there as well. <laughs> um, we do those through uh, Photo Flash Drive, I yep, believe it's yep. called. Yep, all those guys, they're awesome. Love them. Um, they're also really amazing and great customer service. And um, and then we put all of that into our, I don't know if you can see these, but our branded bags with the matching tissue paper. And in every package pickup at the studio or delivery because we do often deliver to our clients homes there's always a handwritten thank you note in there again just taking that extra step it takes you 30 seconds to write out but be honest be genuine right from your heart truly say how thankful you are for them supporting you yeah. and how great of an experience you had with them it's not just how much they enjoyed it with you but how much you enjoyed spending time with their family because there's nothing more complimenting to a mom to hear that like I love hanging out with your kid like yeah. that means the world to me and that's probably going to make me hire you again in the future totally. especially if I love the portraits and the experience so yeah. I think having a consistent brand is really important and branding is not just about packaging by any means and I could talk for hours about this too but um, it's not just your logo it's not just your business card it's everything it's together, yeah. it's the whole thing it's it's your website it's how you answer the phone it's how you present yourself it's all the way down to like the colors you pick for your studio if you have one or how you dress and you know do you you know just little it, it's everything it's everything yeah. adds up and I think that's really important because when you have a strong consistent brand that doesn't confuse your clients they know that this is a luxury experience coupled with a luxury product then they're gonna invest in you yeah. then they're gonna say I'm getting I, I know that this is worth it. it yes it's an investment but this is worth every penny totally uh, Jenny was so great talking today. I learned so much myself. I really appreciate you taking the time to come on the show. Uh, I'm able to to deliver the take the time to bring on awesome educators like this who share their story and publish it on our blog um, because of sticky albums. And so I would love to hear how you've come across sticky albums and how you're using it in your business. And I love hearing stories of how your clients are reacting to them. Yeah, it's um, so thank you for creating sticky albums for starters. Um, I love it. My clients love it. We've been using it for a couple years now and um, it's just one more value added incentive. It differentiates us from other photographers. It's not every photographer that's offering. I mean, we can all offer pretty photos. 
yeah. let's be honest. But um, it's not every photographer. You know, it all it all adds up. So I'm offering you know gorgeous portraiture, a one of a kind experience, and then top on top of that, value added incentives and sticky albums is one of them. And our clients go crazy for it. They're always emailing and texting like two days later, being like, "When am I going to get that app?" So our repeat clients know that they're getting it, and now they're a little bit uh, <laughs> a awesome. little pushy about it. But it's <laughs> really awesome. cute. It's really sweet. So um, they go crazy for it. And actually, this year we've made a change. It used to be included in every uh, collection yep. as a as a thank you gift, but now we're actually putting it in the two top tier packages. Yeah. And we've started a rewards program um, for the studio, which includes a bunch of different steps that they can get points for. And in the end, they can turn their points into you know complimentary um, custom photography products. And nice. one of them is the sticky album if it wasn't included in their package already. So. Right. They love it. Um, they they all think they're their own. They're getting their own custom app that we've created for them. But yep. it's amazing. And and I actually heard a story. Uh, I have a client that travels the world all the time for work and he says that he always makes friends with whomever he's sitting next to on the flight and he says he shows off his sticky album all the time and being a numbers nerd myself I love seeing the back end the analytics of it yeah. so I go in and I'm always curious like oh what is Mr. X you know doing this week and I can see if he's traveling because I can see the numbers spike as far as how many times he's viewed it this week it's so funny That's so awesome. we love it and it's been so helpful for us and our clients they absolutely eat it up. They That's love so it. That's so cool. I love. Uh, and so I think I want to review some of the two things you're doing really well for those of you who are new to sticky albums. Um, don't offer it until the end of the sales session. It's always an incentive. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want it to impact any of your print. It's, 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 if they don't know it's coming, surprise past clients with the great app. And they get they go share it with everybody. You get the marketing benefit. That's what it's designed to do best. Um, and then I love the way you're making an exclusive. But here's a tip that I like to offer for people is you can it's very easy to, to to call one type of sticky album with 20 pictures or 30 pictures um the like the upsell and even if they don't get your top package or they don't hit a milestone you're trying to pull them up to you can still give them one with five pictures oh that's a great idea and the, the cool like everybody should have one because you, you get unlimited apps right so just everybody who walks out is still gonna love it and sure. If like, at, sometimes we hear stories where like, I know we didn't buy the top package, but now we want more pictures in our app. We love the app, and they'll come <laughs> back and add on to the onto the order. That's but, awesome. Uh, it's and then then that's a great you can tip. Obviously, load it with referral coupons and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but just a, a handful of pictures is fine. That way, everybody gets it, and, and then you get all of the marketing bonus, as well as then the incentive when people come in and ask for one. Right. Exactly. That's that's a great tip. Thank you. Sweet. Of course. Well, again, Jenny, thank you so much for taking the time. Are you going to be at any of the trade shows this year at WPPI? Or imaging? We're going to imaging, yes. Awesome. Well, I'll see you so in a couple we'll see days. You there. I'll see you at imaging. Excellent. Awesome. Cheers. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.